What is up YouTube XX Solutions here and today I'm bringing you another video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install and use FTP for the new version of SXOS. So Team Executor have released a new version of SXOS version 1.5 at this current moment in time. I believe it was released earlier today if not yesterday when I'm uploading this video. So there are three main new features which is FTP through SXOS and not through the homebrew. Another cool feature they added is actually installing multiple NSP files at once so you can actually just hit Y on the actual screen and that will just go ahead and install many if you have some queued or you know some on the root of your SD card so that's pretty cool indeed but all I'm going to be showing you in this video is how to access FTP with your SXOS so all you're going to want to do is obviously boot up your console with custom firmware head over to the album once we're inside of album all you're going to want to do is head over to the top and you'll see a new section called options and you'll see FTP server disabled now by default it's disabled every time you boot so what you're going to want to do is head over to options every time and select enabled it kind of makes sense for it to be disabled because you're not constantly going to be using it anyways so when you do want to use it obviously hit a and that will change it to enabled now what you're going to see here is a local ip address with a port number that's pretty self-explanatory if you haven't used a filezilla or any other ftp client before all you're going to want to do is download a free ftp client i use filezilla in my case because i've used it for many years it's free and i can't complain with it so what you're going to want to do now is copy the IP and port or remember it or write it down however you want to do it. Now once you've recognized your local IP address and port number simply open a FTP client of your choice. Again I'm using FileZilla I'll leave a link in the description below. Now in the host field all you're going to want to do is simply type in the port that's on screen. Username field can be left blank as well as the password because we're logging in anonymously and the port number is 5000. All you're going to want to do now is hit quick connect and boom as you can see we now have the file on the root of our SD card. So as you can see, we've got the boot.dat file, which is actually SX's OS. We have the retro arc, which is basically emulators, atmosphere folder. I've got a switch folder with all of the homebrew apps and stuff inside there. So you can basically access all of this inside here. So that's pretty cool indeed. Now this is strictly the root of your SD card. I don't know if they're going to be bringing out another version, which actually allows you to look at the system storage, but um, that might be a future update. So that's pretty cool indeed. Now what you can do from here is obviously transfer files back and forward to your Nintendo Switch without actually removing your SD card. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Very simple, very easy indeed, but also very handy and props to Team Executor for bringing out the version 1.5 update. Feel free to comment below if you have any issues and that's pretty much it. Comment, rate, subscribe and all that good stuff and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.